Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this is an acrylic painting tutorial of how to paint Joshua trees with a really pretty desert sunset background. So a relatively easy painting. And let's go over brushes and colors first. I will be using this number eight round brush. I love this brush because of the nice fine point to it, which is very helpful for the detail work in the Joshua tree. This is the Princeton Velvet Touch brushes that I will link in this tutorial. You'll need a number eight round brush. You'll need a 12 bright brush. This is just any half inch flat brush. It doesn't have to be this exact brush. And I used a one inch flat brush. You can also use like a three quarter flat brush. I used a toothbrush to splatter the stars in the sky. And I use a jar of water, paper plate for palette. You do not have to get these exact supplies or these exact paint brands. This is just what I used. Use whatever you have available. So titanium white, dioxazine purple, cad orange hue, Mars black. We'll also be using cad yellow, medium hue and Prussian blue. If you don't have Prussian blue, you can use any dark blue, like a phthalo blue or an ultramarine blue, but I loved that Prussian blue because it gives that pretty navy blue color in the sky. We are working on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. This design works on any size. Let's load our big flat brush in the water and kind of get the excess water out of there. We don't want this to be too thin. The little bit of water on that brush helps to give us a good start here. This is Prussian blue, and I'm going to paint the upper right corner this really pretty dark navy blue color. And I'm just going to paint about half of that upper right corner. I'm gonna go about halfway. And then I'm gonna load white on my on my brush. So if you have too much blue on the brush, you might wanna wipe it off a little bit. That blue is a very strong color. So the point of adding this white is that we want the left side of this upper sky area to be lighter and the right side to be darker. Um, since I still have Prussian on my brush, I'm getting darker streaks in there, which is kind of what I wanted. I don't want this to be a pure color. I want to create a lot of streaks of blended color in this sunset that don't necessarily blend all the way. So the tricky part of this sunset is that we have blues and yellows and oranges, and we want to try to not create so much green in our sky, because if we tried blending that yellow with this, blue right now, it would turn green. So what you want to do is you want to completely rinse your brush off when you're ready to transition to your yellow. So I have about the top third of the sky painted. There's a few gaps there. Notice there's like a little bit of gap on the upper left, a little bit of a gap bottom right. Let's, so I rinse the brush off. Let's mix a light color here. We want to start very, very light. So this is yellow and white about equal parts yellow and white. You can add more white in there too if you want this to actually be a little bit lighter. But I'm just going to paint this yellow in here, just kind of scattered in this area. So I'm at about halfway down the canvas at this point. Leaving gaps, I am not going to try to blend that yellow with the blue, it's going to turn green. So let's just kind of leave it there for now. Grab a little bit more white Let's kind of fill in some of these gaps. This upper left sort of gap I left, I added more white in there. And I'm just going to kind of see how, we're getting a little bit of green in there, but that's, that's okay, it's not too much green. But more white is going to allow it to not turn as green. Um, but just gently blend that in, but not over blend it. So I have a little pop of yellow in the upper left. You are definitely welcome to take these colors and make your sunset kind of your own. You don't have to make that yellow glow right there. You can change it a little bit. If you want to simplify this, you can just do a pretty gradient of blue to the light blue to white to yellow and then orange. My goal with this sunset is to create this really pretty deserty type of sunset with blocks of different kind of colors throughout the sky, but we have kind of 
the darker sky at the top that we can see stars already. So I'm going to take this white. So this gap right here, we want to somehow transition here. So I'm only using white at this point to kind of fill in that gap area. So that white kind of blending with that darker blue a bit. We have streaks of white up here. Maybe they're high clouds and that white can gently blend down into the yellow. So the white acts as like this buffer transition between our blue and yellow. So now we can start filling up some of these areas down here. We can use more of a pure yellow down here. So towards our horizon line, which is uh, much lower in our canvas actually, we could have brighter, more vivid colors. Could gently blend that white yellow up into that white area without touching any of that blue. Can add some pure yellow over here. And then a little bit of white up here. Kind of gently blend that up. Again, if you get little patches of green in there, that's okay. When you are blending some of this right here, see how I didn't add more paint to my brush? I kind of used my brush dry to blend that a little bit. So if I added more color there, it would have been kind of harder to blend because I have a lot more color to work with. So right here, I'm gonna start introducing my orange. I just wanna be really careful. I have a teeny bit of blue on my brush, so this might turn a little bit muddy if there was too much blue on the brush. At that point, I would recommend kind of washing, rinsing it off and washing it. But I'm taking this orange and kind of bringing it down little streaks of orange in the yellow. The orange is a very strong color. So if it's too strong, you can always add white into the orange and that'll make it more of a light, creamy orange color. So like right here, I wanted this part of the sky to be a little bit brighter because we're towards the horizon line. And we have the yellow, or not the yellow, we have the orange and white, and then we can grab some of that yellow and blend that in very pretty streaks of color all throughout. Yours will definitely look different from mine, the way your colors are blending and the way um, the color, the position where the color is applied is going to be different, that's okay. We can kind of work this area up here a bit. So I wanted to kind of See if I can transition this part a little bit better. Did blue and white, but I didn't want to bring that blue down into that yellow. So I brought that light blue down and it didn't really blend with that yellow. You could always go back and add more white in that area. Up here, a little bit more dark blue, kind of a chunk of dark blue up here. I really wanted an area in the sky to be dark so that those stars would show up. So if we put stars in the lighter part, it wouldn't really show up very well. So a little bit more darker blue at the top. But do you see how I'm not trying to over blend the color? We have the streaks of unblended color that really help create the style of this sunset. I'm going to do some more white. I'm going to add more white in my little problem area up here, to the upper right. I'm going to just bring some streaks of white in there. Maybe these are just high clouds, pop of bright white color. And then maybe we could even take this white and kind of gently bring it down into the yellow and some white transitions in the yellow area. Also, I probably should have mentioned how far down we're going with this sunset. So because this is a kind of a silhouette style painting, our horizon line and our sky steals the show pretty much. Um, but our horizon line is way down at the bottom here. So if you want to, if it feels more comfortable for you to just paint the entire canvas of sunset, you can. But I left like maybe an inch and a half gap on the bottom to give myself enough room for mountains. 
which are going to be at the very bottom of the painting, close to the bottom of the painting. So that's how far I went down with this sunset. So this next step, you don't have to wait for this to dry to do this, but I'm going to use a toothbrush to splatter stars. So um, if you follow any of my other paintings where we do stars with toothbrush, I always say you want to kind of slightly water your white down, but you don't want to water it down too much. You want to test it on a surface first because if it's too watery, you're going to ruin your painting because there's going to be very wet drips and that's not going to be fun. If the white's too thick, you'll also not be happy with your stars because they'll be thick and globby and they almost look like shooting stars. So nice consistency. I always like just add a little bit of water to the brush using my finger and then I use my finger to apply the white and then just flick the brush wherever. The stars really show up nicely against the very, very dark part of the sky. So when you're done with that, you also don't need to wait for this to dry to go to this step, but we're going to do our mountain layer. So there is a layer of purple mountains behind our darker shadowy layer in the landscape. And we'll be using a number 12 bright brush for this. So this is dioxazine purple. The 12 bright is like a half inch flat brush. You can use any flat brush. You can also do this step with a round brush if you feel it's a little easier with the round brush. Let's make this purple. So dioxazine purple is already a dark color. Let's take this a step further and make it just a little bit darker. So we have Mars black and let's load just a little bit of black into that purple. And I'm starting over here on the left Let's give ourselves enough room for our Joshua Tree land. These mountains are even further back. So three and a half inches, about three and a half inches from the bottom of the canvas. And you will end up covering some of your sunset. And that's okay. That under layer of the sunset actually helps a little with these mountains. Um, but I'm using the tip of the brush to draw a mountain range. We can have several peaks. They're not very high, they're kind of shallow. And the line itself is not perfectly straight, it's kind of wobbly. And we want to create this really pretty gradient in these mountains. So they start out very dark at the top, which is why we added that black into our purple. Very, very dark at the top. But they're going to eventually get much lighter and you can see it's kind of pretty that that under layer is yellow it's kind of showing through a little bit on those mountains so there's my top part maybe going down half inch to a quarter inch with this darker purple actually I want to start grabbing more of that pure purple start filling this in we go down a little bit further with it and then grab titanium white. So it's okay that there's still black there because we kind of want that sort of purple gray color going on. So we didn't really have to rinse our brush off. But do you see what we're doing here? We want the tip of the, the top edge of the mountain range to be very dark and it's going to quickly um, get lighter. So we're doing a lot of color mixing with this purple. So we created a, um, a shade of that purple by adding black to it. Now we're creating tints of this purple by adding white to it. We're letting that kind of blend on the canvas. And we're gonna bring this down, this mountain range down even further with this white. We're just gonna keep adding white to this purple to allow it to get lighter and lighter. And then, see, I'm just kind of dragging that white down. If, like right there, if I need to, I can go back and add more of that darker purple since that didn't end up blending. Just when I'm at this part of the mountain range, I can do like horizontal strokes or I can do diagonal strokes to kind of drag that color down. So right here, I grabbed a little bit of that darker purple dragging that down kind of diagonally. And then more white, bring that white down below that and then blend it up. So our mountain range down here is much lighter. 
I'm gonna bring this down. So we really wanna bring this light purple color down pretty far here. The silhouette or the very dark part of our landscape goes up about an inch and a half. So we wanna just make sure that we're not gonna have any leftover gaps from this. And again, I'm just, some areas I'm doing like these choppy strokes, some I'm doing more horizontal strokes. And it doesn't have to blend perfectly. If you have some darker colors down where the lighter color is gonna be, or vice versa, that's okay. I'm just gonna keep bringing this color down. At this point, most of my strokes are just going kind of horizontal, a little bit choppy. But we just wanna make sure that this goes down far enough to where our black part of the land or very, very dark part of the land is going to cover it without leaving any kind of gap. So I'm just gonna bring this down a little bit further with this white. We can always paint over it if we go down too far. And now we can apply our dark layer of the landscape. So let's rinse our 12 bright brush off and let's grab just the Mars black. And let's go ahead and define this area. So this is about an inch and a half. That does not have to be exact. It's maybe about halfway. And then we'll just fill in an area that's a little bit hilly, but not too much. Like a, it's more like an uneven sort of wavy line. We can go back and add more details to this area if we want some rocks kind of sticking up. The nice thing about doing silhouettes is they're very forgiving. There's not really a way we can mess this land area up. And we'll just fill it in solid. If you need to add a little bit of water to the black, you can. So I can even kind of pay attention to this line right here. Maybe there's like a jagged rock sort of sticking up. But that is it for this first portion of the painting tutorial. This needs to dry before we can do the next step because the next step involves kind of drawing our first Joshua tree out with a piece of chalk. So I'm actually gonna draw this first one out. Um, Joshua trees are very unique, uh, pretty shaped trees. And what helped me was to look at some pictures of Joshua trees and really observe the, the shape of them. And you can look at silhouettes of Joshua trees to help you really look at that shape. Um, but the, um, the base of the tree where the trunk is, is going to be about the same distance and height as the part that branches out. So we don't want to make the trunk too tall or too short. And then we can start drawing the parts of the trunk that branch out. The difference with these branches and if we were drawing just a basic tree is um, the width of the branch part stays almost the same width throughout. So it's like we're drawing triangle shaped branches instead of uh, or rectangle branches instead of like triangular branches see how it kind of stays the same width throughout some of them i ended up making pointed at the end um, but knowing that the end is going to really turn into like this spiky piece and that's okay so i'm just adding more 
four inch pieces. Once I go up, there's like a, a main one that splits off. And you can change this. You can add branches that go different ways. Joshua trees have branches that swoop down, curl around each other, twist around. You can really create an interesting style tree. And we can always paint more branches if we feel like we want more, but that's just a nice starting point for painting this in. Let's see how tall I made it. The, the branches went up into the blue area. It's a nice, big, tall tree. And let's start painting this in. So silhouette style is very forgiving, very easy. So I'm just using the 12 bright brush. I'm just going to slowly start filling in what I just drew with the chalk. As we paint the edges of this, we can kind of um, add a little bit of texture and edging to it. It's not exactly a completely smooth edge. It's a little bit wavy on the edge. And if you feel the, the bright brush, the flat brush is not as easy to work with. You can definitely use, do this step with a round brush. And adding a teeny bit of water really helps that black to kind of flow better so you're not constantly reloading your brush. So we can change the direction of this brush. So using the tip to get that curve in there. Curves are easier done with a round brush. So if you want to do switch to the round brush for your curvy parts, you can. But I'm not going to paint the spiky edge. I'll use a different brush for the spiky pieces on the tips of the Joshua tree. So take your time with this. You don't have to follow your chalk drawing exactly how you drew it. You can definitely change it up. So like right here, I twisted my branch a little bit more than how I originally drew it. There's a lot of twisty branches in these trees. Curvy branches. And then we can continue up. So there's another sort of main piece up here that's gonna split off. These two branches, I kind of wanted them to twist a little bit more, kind of end up touching each other, and then splitting off on their own. But very important, as I'm painting this in, notice I'm not making those branches go to a tip, like a typical tree. They are staying thick throughout. I'm just going to continue to add on to my tree, paying really close attention to the shape of the silhouette, the edges. And when this dries, we can go back with like a wet baby wipe, soft cloth to erase that chalk. So don't worry if there's still chalk lines showing. And we can potentially add a few more branches kind of curving and sticking up. But when you're happy with the, how this looks, and again, after we add the spiky leaves, we can always go back and adjust the shape of the tree too. But I'm gonna go in and add the spiky leaves next. So for the spiky leaves, I used a number eight round brush. So this is that brush I mentioned in the beginning of the video that has a really nice point to it. If you don't have this exact brush, find a brush like a liner brush or a detailed round brush that has very thin bristles because the little spikes that we're gonna paint next 
must be done with a very, very thin brush. So what I did here was I loosely added some more water into that. We don't want it watercolor consistency because then this is going to start to drip and spread. But just a little bit of water, kind of an ink consistency. You can really control those spikes. But on the ends of each of these branches, we have like a little ball of spiky leaves. And we're just taking the tip of the brush and dragging the spikes outwards in like a circular direction to create that spiky ball. And then we can add a few spikes just kind of going down the top part of the branch. And see how they kind of vary? So some of them stick out a little bit further, some don't stick out as much, but really beautiful contrast against that sunset sky. Well, you're gonna do that to each of the ends on the Joshua tree, making a little ball of spiky leaves. So this one right here, I'll just start right here on the end of it and do the little ray of lines Go around in a circle and back here. So I went in a complete circle right there. I'm just going to keep going, painting more spikes, kind of vary the second time around. So the second time around, they were kind of longer. Added some more spikes on the top end of that piece. And we're just going to keep repeating this for each of the ends of our branches. I brought this part of the branch over here at the top inwards, just a little bit so it was touching that branch. And so if you want to, you can add more branches and spiky leaves, but I am going to go ahead and do the the little Joshua tree that's over on the right. And that one I'm not gonna draw in chalk. I'm gonna just go ahead and paint that one in. It's smaller and does not need to be as detailed. So I'm going to use the same brush and actually make a really dark gray color because this one is a little bit further away. So I'm going to do a little bit of a lighter color with this. So I'm adding white to my little black pile of paint right here and just going to use this brush to paint out the trunk of the tree 
and its little branches. This ended up not being as gray. So if you don't want to use the, the gray, if you want to just do it black, you can. I'm switching to the number four round brush here. This one gives me a little bit more control, um, but doesn't have that fine point to it because the bristles are a little bit shorter. I can control it a little bit better for this small guy. And I'll switch back to the, the number eight round for the spiky leaf portion. I'm just doing these twisty branches. If you want to do more than two Joshua trees, you're welcome to. They're actually really fun trees to paint. And then I will switch to the number eight again. That has that little fine point to it. And do all the little spiky leaves on the ends of the branches. These ones, same exact technique, only we are further in the distance. So these little spiky the leaf ends are smaller. And then I'll add the little tiny lines that are just kind of going down the top parts on the edges. We can also use this brush to add other details in our landscape, including little shrubs or agave plants or whatever you want to call these little grass chunks. Um, so I did one over here, just using the tip of this brush and kind of fanning it outwards. And then we can do another one. If you wanted to do different kinds of plants or add rocks, you are welcome to. You can even add a jackrabbit or some kind of animal in there. Going to add a few little curvy pieces for some rocks. And I will show you how we can add a little bit of lighting to our silhouette shadow. So if you want to make this a bit more advanced, I'll show you how to do some backlighting. So if the sun was hitting the back of the shadowy, we would still see some highlight on the edges of the plants. So let's let this dry and we can use a soft wipe to erase any leftover chalk. So this is a baby wipe. So a damp soft cloth will gently lift off any leftover chalk. And then let's add titanium white to our palette. So we want to make a sort of light to medium gray. I'm not gonna use this pure white color to add the highlighting, but I want still a light enough color where it's going to show up. So this backlighting just means that some of this is highlighted. So for the spiky part, I just went over some of my dark. In fact, you don't even have to go over it. You can just create new lines with this light gray color. But this will brighten up some of the edging on this and allow it to look a little bit more detailed and advanced. So if you're adding this to the sides, you can take that and just kind of gently paint the edges. You don't have to paint the edges of everything, but just enough to give it that little extra dimension so it's not just a flat silhouette shadow. So when you're painting the edges, there's not a lot of paint on my brush. It's almost like I'm dry brushing that edge and if you find that it's too bright or you added too much gray you can always go back with more black and kind of blend that in
So right here, I had that branch look like it was kind of overlapping here. You can create some overlapping by doing the gray on the sides of some of the branches, but not all of them. And then again, if you feel like you've added too much gray somewhere, you can just grab a little bit of black and just go back in and blend that in. Added a little bit of that gray color on some of these bottom agave plant pieces. And then you can add a little bit of that gray to our ground area, just very gently. Again, almost dry brush style, so you're not loading a ton of paint on your brush and just doing the edges and you can give your ground a little bit more texture with that extra highlighting so it's not completely flat. I just kind of took my brush and applied that light gray very lightly, kind of all throughout, but leaving a lot of that black still showing. And then we can add our little highlighting to our other Joshua tree that's kind of further in the background. And also do some of the edging with our lighter color. The final detail I'm going to do to this painting is add a few more stars in the sky to kind of add to the whimsical effect of this desert painting, including at least one kind of diamond twinkle star. So for that, I use the eight round brush, painted a little dot, and then drag, I'm dragging the little star pointed lines outwards from that circle, little diagonal line. So just one twinkle star, you can do more if you want. You can do shooting star constellations and just adding a few more clusters of little star dots kind of all throughout. And that is it. This is the conclusion of how to paint Joshua Tree's desert sunset landscape painting. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.